Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another review, this time of another Backman Thomas and Friends character. So, I can't begin to tell you how many YouTube comments, Facebook messages, emails, you name it, that I've had about this model. It's a model that I've always wanted to try over the last perhaps two or three years, but every time I've tried to get one, they've always been out of stock, and Backman just didn't seem to be making them. However, that has all changed recently because Backman have uh, well released a brand new batch of these models, and very quickly I was able to pick one up. So. The engine you're about to see has been on quite the long trip. I think his trip would have started in China and then on a boat from China he went all the way to America and then from America onto another boat or maybe even a plane all the way over here to England where I am. And finally his trip is over and he's here in the loft with me and I'm going to show him to you right now. Are you ready? So let's welcome him. It is the Backman Henry at long last. So. Hello there, Henry. It is nice to see you at last. It has been a long while coming, this has. I've been looking for one for two years, as I say, and finally here one is. So I bought this from Tootley Thomas, and if you want to buy some of these over here in the UK, if you're in the UK, if you're in the US, it's a bit different, but if you're in the UK and you want to buy some of the Thomas and Friends range, you have got a couple of options. You've got Tootley Thomas, which actually do have pretty good prices, and they're ready right now. Although, of course, Backman have announced that over here in the UK, they will be making the Thomas and Friends range a lot more accessible accessible pretty soon, which means that a lot of the other model shops should hopefully soon be getting them in stock over the next few years or so, and they might well be cheaper when that happens. So if you really want to get one, Tootley Thomas, if you're happy to wait a couple of years and maybe get them a little cheaper, then that's something to hold out for. As it stands, I paid £84.50 for this from Tootley Thomas. Now, don't get me wrong, that sounds like quite a lot of money. However, it's nothing to the price that Backman charge for these over in the US. Are you ready for this? If you're not sitting down, sit down, all right? Put your drinks down, put your breakables away. $145 for a kid's toy? Man, I was shocked by that. And, you know, if it was an amazing quality kid's toy, I would understand that. But, uh, yeah, I mean, if it's anything like the rest of the range, ain't worth that as far as I'm concerned. Uh, so that comes out at about £114. So, yeah, no pressure, but I'm hoping this is going to be a great model. However, that's no reflection of you, Henry. I'm sure you're going to be just fine. I hope so, anyway. So let's get him out then. Let's find out what he's like. He's been confined in his packaging for far too long. So let's get him out, shall we? All right, so if I know Henry, he's probably going to be in a bit of a panicked state at the moment because he really doesn't like confined spaces after that incident in the tunnel. So let's check in with him. Henry, are you all right in there? I'm, I'm happy to say that your long journey has come to an end and you will no longer have to stay inside this weird sort of tank that you're inside. So we will get him out in just a second. As you can see by the front of the packaging, this is in the nice, modern, up-to-date Thomas & French packaging with all the clouds in the background, which I really like. So that's pretty cool. At least Henry's had quite a nice house to live in while he's been on his journey. If I turn the box around, or the packaging around, you can see some of the other engines. There they are. Um, I think I've got most of those, haven't I? Except probably Percy. Is that it? Yeah, I think I've got the, the rest of those now. Collect them all, it says. Yes, I'm sure Backman would like that, wouldn't they? At $145 a pop, they could uh, all afford to retire on that, I would have said. I seem to remember having made that joke before. If so, I apologise. Right, so I'm going to open this up. Now, kids, I'm going to be using this. This is a knife to open this up. Now, I don't recommend you do this. If I were you, I know, I know that you, you lot want to sort of open these yourself. It's no fun giving it to an adult. So if you must do it yourself, do it carefully, and I would do it with scissors, and just cut along there like that and get it out. Now, I'm not going to do that because obviously I'm filming this as a review and if, if something goes wrong and I lose the footage, I'll have to film it again and if I've cut the top of the packaging off, <laughs> there's no pretending that I haven't already done it. Um, but that's not what's happened today. This will genuinely be the first time. As you can see, there's, uh, there's no cuts or anything. Uh, but what I do, and if you want to do this too, you must get an adult to do it because seriously, if you slip with these, you might damage the model or even worse, you might damage your finger or something. And fingers are handy things, you know, they're quite useful. So if you can avoid chopping them off, it is beneficial I would say so don't do this kids don't do this if you want this happening to your packaging get your parents or your guardians to do it don't try and do it yourself because really if, if you hurt yourself uh, that does take the fun out of these toys just a little bit so I'm being quite careful as you can see I'm cutting towards myself which is not a good idea at all shouldn't be doing that um, but I think we're almost there just a few more little cuts there we go blimey it's like a rescue mission isn't it are you all right inside there Henry no response. I don't know what I was expecting. It doesn't normally say much, but right. 
I'm having a bit of trouble getting this, this end out. Come on. It's almost like Henry doesn't want to be freed. Okay, I think we're there, folks. Are you ready then, Henry? Are you ready to come out? Are you Are going to smell English fresh air for the first time? Well, as fresh as the air is in this uh, dank loft. Okay, so there he is. Wow. And I love the colour of him. It's a really, really nice green on that. Very, very nice indeed. So I'm going to reach inside once more and just see if I've got any paperwork. Yes, I do seem to have. So let's have a quick look then. This is this will show us all about Henry's insides and what he looks like if you just take the body off. So there it is. There is the insides of Henry. You can see all his gears and the motor and everything and the wheels. Yeah, quite, quite involved. I'm not really looking forward to taking this thing apart when I have to service it. And look there, you can see what his face looks like from the back. Uh, that's a bit spooky, isn't it? So, are you ready then, Henry? Shall we show yourself to these good people? Let's start with the tender then. Is the tender connected? No, I don't think so. Ooh, very carefully. Okay, so I'm not sure at the moment whether this is the same tender as what came on Gordon. I think it might well be, but uh, knowing Backman, they might have made this uh, fresh, straight for Henry. But as you can see, lovely green with the Henry's number three on the side. We'll take a closer look at that in just a second. And here he is, the man himself. Here is Henry. Oh, wow. He's quite heavy, actually. Yeah, heavy Henry, we'll have to call him. So there we go. There is Henry. And yes, he's nicely painted. He looks very, very, almost completely different to the Hornby Henry. And in fact, he looks a lot like Gordon, doesn't he? He looks quite longer than the Hornby Henry does. And it looks as though there should be some more wheels at the back there. So I wonder if this is the same chassis as uh, Gordon, the same sort of wheels and everything. Because look, there's a screw hole there. I wonder if that's where, if this was used for Gordon, I wonder if that's where Gordon's back wheels would go. I wonder. Anyway, let's not wonder too much. I'll check on that later on. But for the time being, yeah, there's his tender. So there we are, Henry, out in the open air at last. And I hope it agrees with you, Henry, because I'll be doing quite a lot more with you over the next 20 minutes or so. So let's have a little bit of history on Henry. I know most of you know all about him, but in case you don't, here's a little bit of Henry's history. Henry, this is your life. So, Henry first arrived on Sodor way back in 1922, having been sold to Sir Topham Hatt, or the Fat Controller of course, as an engine built from stolen drawings from Sir Nigel Gresley. During his early life, Henry experienced quite a few troubling experiences, including being bricked up inside a tunnel, and he was always a bit worrisome as a result of the trauma, and he often ran badly as well. And Apparently, he's also quite sensitive to poor quality coal, and he requires nothing but the best fuel in order to run properly. Now, in 1935, so still a long time ago, he was rebuilt from a Gresley design into a Stania Black 5, and he finally became an excellent engine, easily pulling the express train, uh, making Gordon, I think, a little bit jealous along the way. And Henry is still a Black 5 to this day. He continues to work as an actor in Thomas and & Friends, and apparently is now 100 years old, because he was built in 1919, and of course now it's 2019, so his 100th birthday would have been this year. So happy birthday, Henry. Um, let's have a close look at you then and see what you like, shall we? All right, so there he is at long last then, looking very cool, I think, up close for you. It is Backman's Henry, the green engine. Now, I've said a second ago that I thought Backman might have used the same tender or maybe even the same body shell to make their Henry, uh, but I don't think that's true. I've just compared it with my Gordon, uh, with my Gordon, and uh, the tender is completely different. It is a completely unique tender, and even Henry's body is completely different to Gordon's. So that's very, very, uh, that's very cool. You know, Henry is completely unique. However, I do think it is the same wheels and the same mechanism inside. I think it's the same chassis that they've used, which is why you've got this uh, quite a big gap underneath. And the other thing I noticed was that Henry here is about the same size as Gordon. Now, I'm not as much of a Thomas and Friends expert as a lot of you guys are, so let me know. I'm going to put up a poll in the top corner right now. Is that right? Was Henry about the same size as Gordon in the show, or was he bigger, or was he smaller? Do let me know. I'm not sure. I thought Henry was a bit smaller than Gordon, but I might be wrong. However, as far as the Backman models go, they seem to be about the same size, and I don't know whether that's right or not. I have to wonder whether they made their Henry a bit bigger so that they could use the same wheels and chassis, which is a little bit naughty, but as I say, I'm not an expert, so I'm not 100% sure. Okay, so let's look at some of Henry's details then, shall we? What I'm going to do is we'll take a close look at some of his different parts. If you recognise the parts, shout them out, and if I don't recognise some of the parts, let me know down in the comments what they were. So, as you can see, it's very, very nicely painted. Uh, you've got these splashes here. 
Did you know that's what those were called? They are there to give the wheels a little bit more space to turn so they don't catch on the bodywork and things. So their splashes, they're nicely painted. You've got this silver handrail on the side of the body here, and that's so that if people walk along this board, this is where the engineers and the crew and things would walk up and down to check the engine over. That's so that they can hold on to something as they go to make it a little bit safer for them. Now, just in front of the cab, you've got this. Now, I'm gonna give you an option here. I'm gonna give you another pole in the top corner. So, is it A, a safety valve? Is it B, a whistle, or C, a pound coin that somebody's left on top of the firebox? Let me know and we'll see which, which answer comes out on top. So another thing we've not looked at yet is Henry's face. So there we go, there's his face. He looks a little bit mischievous. I wonder if he's done something naughty. I wonder if I'm about to put my hand in something nasty, Henry. I hope you haven't played a prank on me. You're far too new for that sort of thing, Henry. I'm not sure I like that, but he might not have done. He might be completely innocent. Anyway, in front of his face, you can see we have these. These are lamp irons. There we go. And that's what the, uh, well, as you can probably tell from the name, that's what the lamps would be put on in order to show where the engine would be going. And then the buffer beam, as you can see, has got this. This is actually what they would use to couple with in real life. You've got the vacuum hose there. That's what would allow Henry to use brakes in coaches and things if he coupled up to them. And of course, we all know these these are the buffers now they're not sprung on this model or anything like that but uh, that's okay I don't think any of them have been so his cab as you can see has got windows in the side with yellow paint around the windows sadly there is no detail inside the cab or anything like that but there is a space inside the cab at least so if you wanted to put some uh, crew members inside you absolutely could do that and looking at his wheels, which have also been painted into that lovely green, you can see that we've got all these rods and things, and these are known as the coupling rods and the connecting rods, and they're what, in real life, allow these engines to work. Although, of course, this is just a model, so there's an electric motor that does all that for us, but they're there just for decoration, so that's pretty cool. Let's take a look at his tender then. I really like this tender. It's a really strange shape, isn't it? So looking underneath, you can see we've got more green wheels with uh, axle boxes. Those are the axle boxes, those squares. They're what hold the axles in place and they keep them lubricated so that they don't generate lots of heat and wear out too quickly. On the side, we've got Henry's number, number three there, as you can see, as well as some nice red lining. There we have Henry's store of coal. That's where all the coal for the engine would be kept. And as you know, the fireman would shovel that coal into the firebox of the engine in order to keep him going. So he's got a nice full coal load, which is very nice. And then around the back, we've got basically the same arrangement that we had on the front of Henry. You can see more buffers, another coupling, and more vacuum hoses. And that's really all there is to the tender. So yeah, as you can see, he's nicely detailed. You can certainly tell it's Henry, can't you? I think the face is pretty good. And yeah, it all looks very good, doesn't it? There's no marks on him or anything like that. Yeah, he's presented very, very nicely. So he looks great, but how does he run? Well, let's get him down onto the track and let's find out. Okay, so there is Henry down onto the track. He's all ready and waiting for his first ever run. And in fact, I can almost feel his excitement because obviously he's been trapped in that packaging for quite a long while now. And I think he's really just ready to get the chance to stretch his cylinders and give himself a really good run. So first of all, I'll talk a little bit about the mechanism inside the Backman Henry. Just shut your ears for a second, Henry, while I talk about this. Uh, so yeah, unfortunately, the mechanism in this, in my opinion, isn't that amazing, uh, which obviously isn't great because these are supposed to be designed for kids like us who are going to run these for a long while they might not necessarily be too careful with them and you know on the controller kids do like to sort of have them running at max speed so they really have to be as good a quality as they possibly can in order to withstand all of that and yeah the uh, most of the Backman Thomas and Friends mechanisms aren't that really so first of all no tender pickups or anything like that which means you're relying just on the local pickups again not great when wheels start to get dirty and that sort of thing you've only got a Backman three pole motor inside there I think it's a three-pole motor and they are a little bit fragile too so again if kids are thrashing these on the controllers those motors don't last all that long I've found if you do that sort of thing and there are no bearings or anything on the wheel set which means that it's uh, it might wear quite heavily a bit more than it would on the Hornby Henry for example which does have proper bearings inside the chassis which means that it runs nice and smoothly and also you know it doesn't wear itself out too quickly okay so you can unblock your ears now Henry you can listen again however I've never tried this Henry yet in fact I've never run a Backman Henry on this layout before so this will be his first ever try okay Henry are you ready now this might hurt to start with but um, it will be worth it you will it will get easier I promise so his first ever move wow look at that so this is his first ever run and he's crawling forwards like that so yeah say what you like about the mechanism but it does work well I'm impressed with that straight out of the box backwards ah it's cut out again well at least that illustrates what i was saying if it had tender pickups it probably wouldn't have done that right try again 
And there we go, give him a little nudge. Try a bit faster, shall we? There we go. And I can see that his eyes are moving as well. And I'll show you that if I can. There we go. So his eyes look left and right as he goes along, which is a really cool feature. None of the Hornby ones ever had that. So that's pretty cool. Uh, he does run quite noisily. Again, I mean, because there's no bearings or anything, you have got a lot of metal-on-metal metal grating together. And, of course, there are lots of gears inside this as well, the gears which are used to operate his eyes and make them look left and right like they do. So that's really cool. So what I'm going to do, and you should do this as well, by the way, folks, if you get one of these, you're going to want to let him run on his own without any coaches for a good long while, about 20 to 30 minutes in each direction. Because when these motors are brand new, they don't always work as well as they should do. And it takes about 30 minutes in each direction for the motors to wear in and start to work as they should do. Now, you can't tell. I mean, it looked as though that motor was absolutely fine. But if I put, say, 10 coaches behind the Backman Henry right now, the motor would be under an awful lot of strain because of that and it can even damage the motors so in order to avoid that you just have to run him on his own for a little while so we're going to do that in just a second and before i do though i've got a bit of a surprise for you backman henry <laughs> just back up will you because there's somebody i'd like you to meet all right now you've never met this person before you might have heard me talk about him in fact i've talked about him quite recently but it is your long lost brother you've never met but you're about to so here we go he's coming right now it is your brother, the Hornby Henry. So say hello, this is your first ever meeting. Let's bring him in a bit more. There we go. So as you can see, Backman Henry, he looks a little bit like you, but also a little bit different. Now, I'm gonna say this straight away because I know there are gonna be arguments about which Henry is the better Henry. So you have to just agree that you're both good for different things. I think Backman Henry, you're probably best at looking more like the Henry in Thomas and Friends. But then Hornby Henry, I think you're probably a bit better at actually working and being a good loco that runs. And you've got a bit more power too, haven't you? So yes, I hope you're gonna get on well with each other. I will send the Hornby Henry out of the way and you can catch up a little bit later on. You can talk and exchange tales of the flying kipper and whatnot. But for now, I'm gonna do what I promised to do and let the Backman Henry run on his own for a little while. And while he does, we will watch him. So off you go, Henry. Enjoy your first ever trip around Sam's Trains. So, welcome to Toy Town, Henry. You're about to get onto Gordon's Hill now. Now, it's not actually a good thing to have parts of the track named after you because that means you got stuck on them. But that's Gordon's Hill nonetheless. And uh, now you're heading through Toy Town Station. There we go, give the passengers a quick toot. There we go. And under the bookcase you go. Ooh, it's a bit dark in there. It's a bit like that tunnel you got stuck inside all those years ago. And then when you come out the other side, you've got now a really nice long straight to stretch your cylinders along, so there we go. This is where you can get some really crazy speeds up if you want to. So there we go, that's pretty nice. And then, once you go around that next bend, past the turntable of course, Gordon's turntable. And there we go, you're back at the start. So that's your first lap completed. Well done, Henry. So, I must say, he's running really, really well, and he looks great too, doesn't he? <laughs> so, I think he's really enjoying himself. We'll leave him to it. I'll stop recording. I'm going to let him do a few more minutes of this forwards, and then he'll do 20 minutes or so backwards. And then once he's done that, I'll start filming again, and I'll be back with you in just a second. All right, folks, talk to you in a sec. Okay, so there we go. Henry has now been run in. Now, it didn't go 100% without a hitch because I noticed after just a few minutes of running that his eyes started to stick. Now, to start with, I thought, you know, I'm just going to leave that because the eyes aren't an integral part of the mechanism and it shouldn't really affect anything. However, then I noticed that when the eyes were sticking and then cracking into position, the motor would actually slow down and Henry himself would actually slow down. So I thought, you know what, this could damage the motor. So I had to take him apart a little bit and this happened. So to put it mildly, from some angles, he does look a little bit creepy without his face on. <laughs> However, I was able to get a little bit of oil onto that eye mechanism and free it up a bit so that it actually worked without snagging. And that has fixed the problem. But again, yeah, that demonstrates that Backman aren't really capable of producing a decent mechanism, which is a shame. So bear that in mind if you're thinking of getting one of these. Anyway, Henry, I've got another surprise for you because while you were running around, I've set up this, your very own flying kipper, a train full of fish finger vans, insulated fish wagons, and and oh yeah, we've got a couple of Tidmouth milk tankers as well, because as we all know, fish do love milk. So come on, Henry, let's go and do this uh, oh, backwards. Let's see how you can pull. Hopefully you'll manage them all. 
All right, try and keep it nice and slow, Henry. I know you're excited. Easy does it. There we go. Right, what do you reckon, folks? Do you think he's coupled? Well, let's see. Go on, then. Forward you go, Henry. This is your first ever train. How does it feel? Well, he's able to move them. That's good. A bit more speed, then, and we'll let these wagons go by. There we go. <laughs> the Flying Kipper, or the Sam's Trains edition of the Flying Kipper. So, as you've already seen on the inside line today, we have the Hornby Henry, who has very kindly and very graciously agreed to forfeit his fish train, or the Flying Kipper today, and he's just taken some passenger coaches instead, so that the Backman Henry can feel welcome with his favourite train. So there we go, there goes the Hornby Henry, very nice, with a few nice coaches. And then on the inside line, we have everyone's favourite, well, I hope it is, it's my favourite anyway, it is of course Gordon, the Backman Gordon, and he's also got quite a nice rake of passenger coaches. So, see which other Thomas and Friends characters you can spot on the layout, there's one just there for you, and let me know which ones you spot in the comments. Alright, well, let's go and see how Henry's getting on with Gordon's Hill, shall we? So, this is pretty strange, if anyone started watching the video from here, they might think they were seeing double, but uh, nope, there really are two Henrys here. And they work pretty good together. Right, come on then, Henry. Let's see how you get on with Gordon's Hill. With all this fish. I tell you what, I think he's going to be a good worker. He's looking very useful, as far as I'm concerned. He's, uh, he's hauled those up there with absolutely no problem. I didn't see any wheel slip. Yeah, I think he's eager to please, isn't he? He's trying to make a good impression with his first ever video. So, pretty good. Well done, Henry. I like that. As you can see, we've got some great Western engines who've come out to welcome Henry as well. Say hello to them, Henry. Hello. That didn't sound like Henry. I don't know who that was. It wasn't me. Okay, so while the Backman Henry can't hear me, let me know in the poll which Henry is the better Henry, Hornby or Backman. I'll let you decide that one. Good old Gordon, looking fantastic as always. Very splendid job, Gordon. Keep up the good work. Another thing I haven't mentioned is Henry's pulling power. I have, I have measured the pulling power. He uh, has a pulling force of 0 0.3 newtons. Now, the strange thing about that is, well, first of all, it's quite a lot. So, well done there, Henry. That's a bit more than I was expecting. But second of all, that's exactly the same as the Backman C1 Atlantic. Now, that is strange to me because apparently, according to the Thomas and Friends law, Henry was originally supposed to be based on the IVAT C1, wasn't he? Which is very strange that he has the exact same pulling power as that thing, to within a tenth of a newton. That's really quite strange, I thought. Alright, so here are some of my ratings then for the Backman Henry. Now as a toy, obviously it doesn't need to conform to the same standards that most of the models do, but I will just give it some ratings anyway for you. So the detail I thought was pretty good, as you can see, he had all of the details that Henry should, so I've given it three and a half stars. Obviously it's pretty basic, you know, there's no sprung buffers or anything super, super impressive about that. But then as a kid's toy, that's probably what you expect. So yeah, I've given it just over middle of the road there. Performance though, as you could see, he did run really, really well. He's got a great slow crawl and also quite quite a bit of power, so that's very good. The mechanism though, yeah, not very good. Even the eyes were sticking on mine at some point. So not a fantastic mechanism, which is a little bit of a shame. So keep that in mind. The quality though was pretty good. Uh, so I've given it four and a half. Yeah, it does seem to hold together pretty nicely. No bits drop off or anything like that. So it is at least well built. Uh, the value though, obviously $145 is just insane. I can't believe that they would think it would be okay to sell these for that. However, for the £84.50, I think it was, how much did I pay? Yeah, £84.50 that I paid from Tootley Thomas, I thought that was just okay, not too bad. So I've given it three star, just in the middle of the road. Overall then, that is 7.48 out of 10. Yes, that's a pretty good score. Let's put Henry into the rankings then. There we go, yep, 19th, just above the Backman K3 and below the Dapol B4. Now parents, just bear in mind, I am being nice here for the sake of the kiddies. Just bear that in mind. So yeah, I love him. I think all my other engines and things are going to really get on well with him as well. He seems brilliant. I love him. Hmm. Bullman, where on earth did you come from? Uh, I don't know, that cow, honestly. Ah, he's derailed. <laughs> okay, Henry, I'm coming to help. I'm coming to help. Bullman, that wasn't very nice. You're not supposed to play pranks on brand new engines like that. Get out of the way. Okay, is everything all right, Henry? Let's try you again, shall we? Yep, seems alright. Bullman, don't ever do that again, that was very nasty. 
Okay, folks, well, that is the end of my review of the Backman Henry. I hope you enjoyed seeing him, and hopefully he will appear in lots more videos for you. For now, though, thank you for watching. Thank you for your company. Let me know if there's any other Thomas & Friends engines or models you'd like me to review, and I'll look into that. For the time being, though, once again, thank you for watching. <laughs> Donald and Douglas are watching very closely, and I will see you very soon. All right, cheers, folks. Take care.